morning and started us on our way, and we just want to tell you thank you. You blessed us as we come, and you blessed us as we go, and we just want to tell you thank you. We want to thank you that Jesus, that you are our Lord, and that you are our God. Thank you that you made a way out of no way. Thank you that you opened doors for us, God, and you closed doors for us, and we want to thank you for it. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, and we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence here today. We welcome you to get into everything we do and everything we say. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. You've been good to us. Hallelujah. You thank, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You brought us through, Lord. You brought us through sickness and you brought us through death and you brought us through hate and you brought us through crime and you brought us through hard times. You brought us through good times. We just want to thank you today. We want to make this day about you, Jesus. We want to make this day about you. Not about singularities, not about carpet, not about who's here and who's not, but it's all about you because you're worthy to be praised. You deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we love you today, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. We love you today, Lord, and we just want to tell you thank you today. Thank you today, thank you today, thank you today. Every day we want to make sure you're satisfied with our praise. Every day we want to make sure that you get your due praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give honor to whose honor is due today. <coughs> to our pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor Curtin Krause and to Pastor Peggy Krause. We give honor and give honor to you and all of you today. Just thanks for today, y'all. Just glad to be here. You know, and, and, and I, I know it's kind of rough out there, and sometimes we have to fight to impress our way and press through this oppressed spirit. I, yeah, I feel it trying to come in. Sometimes you just kind of, but and you need some encouragement. You need to be built up and picked up, and you need somebody to say, keep on going. And, and you know, I, I, I made a mistake last night, but that's okay. Get on up. And I'm not, you know, talking about me, but I repeat every day anyway. Every way when I roll over, I'm repeating. Because I know, hallelujah, I know that I serve a holy God. And he's so holy. See. What we have, the church have done is they have forgotten how holy God is. And the church turned into a social light. A play, and, and we start seeking titles. And we start seeking positions. And we start seeking to be uh, known. And, and I said last Sunday to be politically right. And, and we want everybody to know our name and who we are. We want to make a name of ourselves. But we serve a holy God. And he sent his son to die for our sins so that we all can come into, and all of us can come into his kingdom. And, it, and he wanted us to come into his kingdom because our Lord Jesus is our righteousness. Hallelujah. And his kingdom is righteousness. Glory. And he's the king of righteousness. So he is the king over a righteous people, not the king over any kind of people. But his kingdom is righteousness, and he is holy. And I'm not going to be before you long. Um, you, if you didn't catch that, that'll be about it. <laughs> but I do want to read a few scriptures to you, just because, see, I, I, I wanted to preach how great about Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, and, mm -hmm. and, and I like to tell the Bible stories. 
I, and I'm an Old Testament favorite. You know, I like to get in the Old Testament count. The, uh, if you read a lot of the Old Testament, it put a little fear in you. Okay. And you start knowing how, how, how God didn't tolerate sin, and you start getting it right. But God, having a, permitted me to go into the Old Testament to preach about the stories about David and Solomon and all of the wonderful stories in the Old Testament because he want me to warn the people. Um, he want me to warn the people because, as the old folks used to say the song, time, 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 time is winding up. Time is winding up. And we need to know, and we need to know that, that we just can't come to God any kind of way. We need to know that we can't just serve him any kind of way. And yes, there is grace and more grace. You know, we, we, we like to say, well, I'm under grace now. Yes, there is grace. And there is more grace. But if you just teach how uh, on grace and don't tell the other side how to get there, how to live holy in grace, how to walk holy in grace, then you 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 confuse a person when they always all they're thinking about is grace and the favor of the Lord being upon them. Yeah, yeah. And you leave out the part that he said, but if you do these things. Yeah. And if you do that, so let's just go to the scripture right here. Um, Isaiah 55. And it's a familiar scripture. 55, 6, and 7. It said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. This tells me that... Uh, one day he's not going to be able to be found for you. This is an individual thing. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. One day, you know, he, I'm telling you, the way the world is today, the word said that, the Lord said that he'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. Some people are calling up, down, and down up. If you see that the things that are evil, they're calling good. The things that are good, they're calling evil. Can't you see how the world is turning all the way around? It's turning around. And uh, the Lord's uh, calls you, the Lord said he'll cause you to believe a lie. You can't even tell the truth from a lie because you will not answer the call of repentance. He said, the day you hear my voice, hearten not your heart. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He have opened a portal for us this season. And this is for us to seek him. This is for us to turn. They said, this is for us to call upon him while he's near. Right now, he's calling you to come. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Come on in. Let's get it right. I know you've been in the church 40, 50, 10, 5, 2, 1 year. But let's get it right this time. Let's get it right. Come on in here. Let's do it the way I said do it for a change. I know you like fighting the government. I know you like fighting CNN. I know you like fighting your best friend. But come on in here. Come, 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 come. Seek me. Call up on me while I'm near. He said, let the wicked 
forsake his way and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Your thoughts count, people. He said the unrighteous man, his thought. Stop and think about what you're thinking about. What you're thinking about. You smiling with your mouth. You saying one thing with your mouth. Oh, I love you, I love you. But the, your heart is far from me. Come on, y'all, let's be one. Let's stop being two-faced. Let's stop being hypocrites. What, see, the, what the, the reason, Sister Johnson, what are you talking about, woman? I'm talking about let's our mouth line up with our hearts. We say one thing with our mouth, but in our hearts. See, we done got real good at faking it. And we be around people and that's what God is looking at. Mm -hmm. He's looking at how you treat your brother. Right. He's looking at how you treat your sister. And that's so important to God. So you're looking at your brother and you're saying, oh, I am so glad to see you today. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And that brother go on and sit down and you look over there at your neighbor and say, I can't stand you. <laughs> You're saying, Lord, Lord, I love you. I'll save you. But behind closed doors, you cursing and fighting and gossiping and backbiting and, and doing all kind of, I'm trying to tell you, we got to get it right. Sister Johnson got to get it right. We got to live holy. For he's coming for a holy people. He's coming for a church without a spot. Our wrinkle. He made it possible for us to live holy. How did he make it possible for us to live holy? He made it possible for sending his son. And now we put on his righteousness. He don't look at us. He look at his son. What, what is that? He gave his son as an example of the way we are supposed to live. And we are supposed to follow him. He said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return unto the Lord. And he said he would have mercy upon him and to our God, for he would abundantly pardon. If you call on him, he would answer. If you turn, he will receive you. He's a merciful God. He's a long-suffering God. It says in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, it says, If I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, uh, if I command the locusts to devour the land, or uh, if I send pestilence among my people, pestilence, pestilence is a deadly and an overwhelming disease, that affect the entire community. But we got a pestilence up on us that is affecting the entire nation. He said, if I send no things, he said, if my people, not the Muslim, not the this and not the that, he said, if my people, he's talking to us, He's talking to the church. He's talking to those that believe. He said, if my people, so saints, he said, which are called by my name, should humble themselves, humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and forgive their sins, and will heal their land. If the, you know what? Uh, it's one of the stories in the Bible, uh, someone, it was sin in the camp. There was sin in the camp. He's talking about my people, if my people, then he made it plain. That's called by my name. Are you called by his name? Then he say, you know, take, do inventory, says. This is the time to do inventory. Check out your heart. Make sure your heart is right. Make sure and very sure. See, I have to talk like this because 
Somebody I loved died a few weeks ago. Somebody I loved died the other day. Somebody I loved died a few months ago. And what was I talking about to them? I had to, I go back when I passed by that casting and looking there, and what were they hearing from me? I can thank the Lord that I, the, the, a few, the last few that I knew, they was listening to me talk to, about Jesus, right. telling them about Jesus, telling them, I, the Lord said he would none perish, but that I'll come to repentance. Listen, there is no car, no house, no man worth losing your soul for. Listen to me, why you can hear me. If you just go across this, this um, video and you just happen to see me standing here and just say I'm going to see for a few minutes what she's talking about, let me tell you something now. Make sure and very sure that your soul is anchored in Jesus. I'm not talking about having your name on a church roll. I'm not talking about walking up there shaking the preacher's hand. I'm not talking about being led in a prayer and somebody say, repeat after me. I'm talking about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he said that there's going to be some that come to him and say, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? They were saying the name of Jesus. They're going to say, and didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? Didn't we sing a song in your name? Didn't we feed the poor in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I know you not. You workers of iniquity. Why workers of iniquity and I'm doing all these good things? Because it's a personal relationship with Jesus. It's faith in what Jesus did for you on Calvary. It's not about your works. It's about what Jesus done. And you can do all the works and not know him. You can do all that and not have a personal relationship with him. You can do that without and not know him. How do you know you're not known? When you get in your word, you will know that he don't tolerate you treating your neighbor any kind of way. He said, love your neighbor. When you get close to him and in his word, you know that he don't tolerate anything. He even don't want you hating your enemy. He even tells us to love your enemy. Do good. Be easily entreated. When you get in a relationship with him, you know what a privilege it is to pray, to fast. Oh, what well, she talking about fasting? You ain't got to fast in these days. But you want to. You want to treat it. Why? Why? Not because I'm afraid I'm going to go to hell. Because I love him so much, I don't want to do nothing to displease him. I love him. And I want to be closer to him. And I know that the more you lay aside the things, the weight and the sin that so easily beset you, the closer he'll draw. He said, if you draw not to me, I'll draw not to you. And the more you lay that stuff, the closer he comes to you. And the more closer he gets to you, the more you realize how holy he is. Yeah. He's holy. How can you expect? He said, holiness, let the peace of God, hallelujah, he said, because holiness without no man shall see the Lord. No man. How do you think you can see and hold on to a holy God living out all kind of ways? And it hurts my heart because I, I, I see you on Facebook. 
and you're saying everything damnable. You're so vocal. You, you spurred out your opinion about everything. You louder than anybody on the earth. Typing your words. And then you're the main one. Thank you, Jesus. And I love the Lord. And I love the Lord. And I love the Lord. I'm here to tell you. If you're not obeying him. He said if you love me. You will keep my commandments. If you love him. You will obey him. If you love him. You will seek him. If you love him, you will love me. My last scriptures. <laughs> but seek ye first, hallelujah, the kingdom of God. And see, in all the scriptures that I have read to you has seek in them. Seek, 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 seek. And that word seek to go in search of, to look for to ask for, to strive for. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness. I know we quote, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They that are righteous do righteous. If you're righteous, then do right. Do right. He said, and all these other things will be added unto you. He said, now the kingdom of God, he's talking about the kingdom of God is not, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then Romans says, Romans 14 and 17, <clears throat> for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And it's not, the kingdom of God is not with observation. In other words, you can't say the kingdom of God is over here and the kingdom of God is back there, over there. The kingdom of God is within you. So, it's in your heart. It's the matter of the heart. So, it's in your heart. So, make sure you have a righteous heart. Make sure your heart is at peace. Father, peace with all men. Then he said, for holiness, no man should see the Lord. Make sure that your joy is in the Holy Ghost. And we know what the word says, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So your joy is in the Holy Ghost. Your strength is in the Holy Ghost. He's the one that gives you the ability, the power to walk right, live right. Love one another. He said, the Bible said that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He the one give you the love of God. He the one make it possible for you to love God. Hallelujah. So remember, that's what the kingdom of God is. It's not meat and drink. It's righteousness. It's peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. And it is in your heart. Saints. Check out your heart. Make sure that you're living holy. Make sure that you're living right. And if you do this, you will have all the encouragement you need. You will have all the favor. You know, uh, the uh, Bishop Jake say favor ain't fair. You will have all the favor you need. You will have all the peace and protection you need. He said, I will not hold any good thing from them that walk up right before me. He'll bring in that way with husband. He'll bring in that way with child. He'll deliver you. He'll save you. He sent his word and heal you. It's all in Jesus, but you have to seek him so that it can be open unto you. Because a lot of things we're asking God for that he done already done, that we just have to start thanking him for, and that we just have to start believing him for. But I don't want no one to pass this life and didn't say they heard somebody tell them, 
you got to accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Lord means he's over everything in your life. You have no more say so about nothing. It's him. He has to say. And all he want to hear from you is, yes, Lord. Pray for Sister Johnson.